The movie starts off with the shot of an ocean bed. Then it gradually moves up to the water's surface. Jen's unconscious at the edge of the beach. And when she regains consciousness, she notices that Brad is also out cold. She runs over to Brad, and when she turns him over, she sees some coral embedded into his stomach. He's barely alive. So scared, Jen calls out to see if anyone's nearby but isn't getting a response. Jen takes off her backpack and the life jacket. She then takes Brad out of the water, further onto shore, and removes the rock from his abdomen. She uses her scarf to apply some pressure on that injury. Then she runs into the jungle at the edge of the beach and finds a coconut, uses a stone to cut it open, and runs back to Brad. She pours the coconut water in his mouth, only to find that Brad's already dead. She holds his face and calls to him, but it's obvious he's gone, devastating her. We end up seeing the island that Jen and Brad are on. There's a slight stretch of beach surrounding a dense forest. A devastated Jen walks around the island until she comes to a full circle, returning to Brad's body. She then walks into the jungle, coming to a clearing where she sees a bag hanging on a tree and a red cooler. Excited, she's calling out again, hoping to see somebody, but no one's answering. Jen examines the contents of the bag in the cooler, where she finds some bottles of Coke. She leaves it behind and walks forward towards a thermos flask and a small tin case. Inside the tin case, she finds a deck of cards, a pack of matches, and some other things. She also finds an abandoned tent canvas covering a backpack containing an old Game Boy, a car radio, a book, and a teddy bear. When Jen walks out back to the beach, she hears a sound coming from the hollowed-out tree. So she goes to investigate it and finds it's a tropical bird. She finds some fronds to cover Brad, and when she looks around, all she can see is sand and the ocean. Before we go on like this video, smash the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell to get good luck for the whole day. So that night it's raining heavily and she has to find some sanctuary under some fronds and use a jacket as cover. In the morning she picks up some small fish that washed up on shore and as she's picking them up, she sees a shark corpse mutilated in half with deep gouge marks on its body. Jen's looking out at sea, wondering what could have caused such wounds. So Jen's trying to disembowel the fishes using some kind of flat stone like a knife. It's a messy business, but in the end she gives up and goes back to the cooler, sitting with her belongings. She opens up her diary and finds out that the water had washed out all the ink in it. Inside, Jen sees a picture of her and her boyfriend. So in the jungle, Jen comes upon another clearing, where she sees a burial site for three people. And she's spooked, so she heads back to the beach. And back where Brad's chillin', he's starting to smell. Jen drags him inward, digging a shallow grave and buries him, using a piece of wood with B carved on it as a tombstone. Later that evening, Jen's eating a dinner of some roasted fish. The next morning, Jen's making her daily walks around the beach, when she notices Brad's grave had been desecrated. His body is mutilated and dragged away by somebody or something into the jungle. She ends up getting a stick, sharpens it, and walks into the jungle to check things out, but she's not finding anything. The following day, Jen's seeing something in the distance, so she decides to swim towards it, discovering that it's a bucket and a piece of luggage. She takes a deep breath and dives into the ocean, where she sees a black hole on the ocean floor. Jen takes the box and bucket to shore. In the box are a pair of sneakers and some clothes. So that night, she changes her clothes and puts on the sneakers, sitting in front of the fire. She opens the tin box again and examines the contents, discovering a secret compartment in the tin box, hiding some pictures. She tries to use the fire to examine the images when she hears the sound of an airplane overhead. She's running to get the flare gun, and when she fires it, it doesn't fire. She goes to fire a second time, and it works. With the flare glowing in the distance, she ends up waiting to see if she gets a response. But as the flare disappears from the horizon, Jen sees a humanoid monster rise from the water. Oh, she's frightened, running back to where she was sitting, picking up her stick weapon and running into the jungle. She finds a spot to hide, hearing the rustling leaves and the sound of approaching feet. She stays hidden until she eventually hears this monster leave. 
So the following day, she runs back out onto the beach. She goes back to the four pictures that she was looking at the previous night. They're all of a family. The last picture shows a woman holding the bag by the tree Jen found earlier. In the photo, Jen can pick out two glowing dots in the distance. She considers what to do. She empties the box, puts in her and Brad's life jackets in there, and tries to use it as a raft. She takes that makeshift raft to the ocean and tries to climb onto it, but despite a lot of attempts, the raft box fails to hold her weight. She throws the life jacket and the box back to shore. That night, Jen uses the hollow tree as her sleeping spot. She's keeping her weapon close in case the monster comes back. Sure enough, Jen's sleeping in the log when she hears the monster arrive. She's trying to stay quiet while the beast approaches. The monster rolls the log with Jen inside, but she still doesn't make a sound. Then, as suddenly as it started, the terror comes to an end. So in the morning, a terrified Jen comes out of the log. She ends up catching a small shark using some small fish as bait, and then she uses the shark as bait for the monster. Night comes. While hiding in a spot where the hanging shark is in plain view, she watches out for this monster. She closes her eyes for a short while, and then hears a snap. By the time she opens them, the shark's gone. In the morning, Jen's examining the frayed ropes, and while sharpening her weapon, she sees something in the distance. It's a body floating in the water. She goes out to the body to find it's a guy that's cut in half with his face mutilated. So Jen ends up hanging up the body the way she did the shark. And when night comes, Jen is sitting in her hiding spot watching the monster take down the body and fling into the ocean. She ends up hearing an airplane engine overhead. She's still kind of contemplating what to do when she sees the monster's feet nearby. She keeps quiet until the monster walks away. And then it's morning, where Jen is using a canvas to make a hammock high up in the trees. And when night falls, she uses that hammock as a watchtower. During a thunderstorm, she's looking around to see the monster. As she's watching overhead, there's a flash of lightning, and the monster sees her. She quietly lies back into her hammock, and as the monster approaches, she's almost hyperventilating. The monster pulls on the hammock, and Jen falls to the ground. Despite the monster's best efforts, Jen manages to evade it. She gets her weapon, makes it to the beach, and just keeps running. This monster jumps out of the water, almost pouncing on Jen, but she's faster. And this beast goes back into the water and eventually lunges again. This time it's standing in front of Jen, who attacks it with her weapon. In retaliation, the monster flings Jen away. But before she can stand, the monster kicks her in the water. She's looking around for the beast, but it's gone. Now she's injured and scared. She heads back to the jungle to recuperate. The following morning, Jen examines her wounds, takes a bath in the ocean, and has a change of clothes. As she's putting on her sneakers, a raft appears on the horizon, but is she imagining it? When she realizes that the raft is real, she takes off her shoes and swims towards it. On board are her friend Mia and her boyfriend Lucas. And as soon as they get to shore, Jen hugs Lucas and cries as he comforts her. Mia, on the other hand, is examining the island. So Jen's preparing a meal of roasted fish, coconuts, and cokes for Lucas and Mia. They both say that the island's beautiful, but Jen tells them that they should leave whenever they're ready. Lucas and Mia look at her in disbelief, but Jen tells them that the island isn't safe. She tries to explain the monster's presence to Lucas and Mia, but they're not believing her. Jen even shows them the pictures and explains that the luminous dots are the monster's eyes. Lucas said that they should wait and see if anyone else shows up, while Mia's suggesting there's a possibility that Brad will show up. Jen tells Mia that Brad's dead. She buried him, and the monster dug him up. Mia walks away while Lucas asks for a description of this monster. She says it's massive, it has two eyes, and it smells. Mia tries to convince Jen of the hopelessness of getting back on the raft, but Jen says that she prefers to die on a raft than on that island. Mia tells her that she has no idea how life on the raft is. Jen leaves Mia to find Lucas, who's examining that flare gun. She tells Lucas the best direction is west. After all, she's seeing many airplanes fly west, so she's hoping that one of the planes will find him. When Lucas doesn't reply, Jen tells him that she knows this sounds crazy, and he agrees. She asks him to believe her, and Lucas says he does. He just needs some time to wrap his mind around it. 
Jen says she's going to go out to get more food, borrowing Lucas's Swiss army knife. She asks him to tell Mia to get ready and goes into the jungle. When Jen opens the knife to cut her fish, she sees it's stained with blood. She glances back at Lucas and Mia, who are discussing something. Jen thinks about it, then continues what she's doing. When Jen comes back with the fish, Lucas and Mia tell her that they're not leaving. No matter how much Jen tells them that they should go, they refuse. They're not getting on that raft. Not this night, at least. Jen ends up agreeing and leaves them. She goes into the water to calm down, and when she looks back, she sees Lucas and Mia walking away together. Mia goes back to the shore, packs up some supplies in the cooler, and the flare gun in her backpack. Jen quietly walks to the raft, looking to see if Lucas and Mia see her. They're sitting on the beach as she pushes the raft towards the ocean. Mia and Lucas run towards Jen and the raft, trying to get her back to shore. Jen's struggling, and in the process kicks Mia in the face. Mia hits Jen with a paddle, and she passes out in the water. So Jen regains some consciousness, and it's dark. She's tied to a tree. She sees Mia sitting on a log, who explains to her that Lucas has gone to look around the island. She asks her to untie her, insisting that she's not making it up. But Mia says that Jen has a history of making things up, making it hard to believe her. Lucas ends up coming back and says he didn't see anything from his surveillance of the island. Jen asks Lucas to untie her, and he makes her promise not to do anything rash. He says it's Jen's fault that they're here. He was having a great week until she told him she didn't want to be on the boat, and now they're trapped on an island. Jen says now's not the time to fight, and that Lucas should untie her. Lucas says even if Jen had escaped the island on the raft and found help, how was she going to live when he paid for her life? Lucas tells Jen she betrayed him. She wanted to leave him to starve on the island. And while they're talking, they hear Mia scream. Lucas grabs a log out of the fire and runs towards Mia. The beast already has her. Lucas hits her with a torch and it drops Mia, striking Lucas instead. As the beast dives back into the water, Jen's struggling to cut the rope. When she does, she grabs her weapon and goes after Lucas. He tries to reach out to Mia, who's in the water, but before he can get her, the monster pulls her under the surface. It's the next morning. Jen's getting down from the tree where they spent the night, urging Lucas to get down too, but he's hesitant. Jen's assuring him that she hasn't seen the monster during the day. So he eventually gets down and they go to the beach. Together, both catch some fish and end up smoking them. They pack their things and get onto the raft. Jen gets in the raft first and sees some blood on the floor of it. Lucas starts paddling when he hears something. Suddenly, the beast's hands swipe at Lucas from the water. He hurries into the raft and covers it up. Jen gets the weapon and they try to get ready. The monster's bumping the raft from below. They see its hand as it's running across from the bottom of the raft. So the monster pierces the bottom of the raft and brings up its head. Lucas fires at it with the flare gun, but misses. He gets it a second time, and the beast goes back into the water. Jen relaxes a bit, but suddenly the monster reaches in and pulls her into the water. The beast takes her all the way to the bottom of the ocean. She's struggling, but eventually stabs it with that Swiss army knife. So the monster releases her, and it sinks to the bottom as she tries to swim to the surface. And suddenly, the monster turns around and attacks Lucas, who has dived into the water to rescue Jen. It captures him and takes him down to this black hole. Jen's going back to the beach, the raft also washing ashore. The first thing she does is reignite that fire. And then she starts writing a memoir of her time on the island as proof of her encounters with this monster. She gets a lot of sticks and sharpens them. And then she exhumes the body of the family buried on the island and sharpens their bones. She makes preparations for a final standoff with this monster. And that night, the monster is coming on shore. Jen's baiting it with fish and surrounding it with fire. She runs at it and stabs it with a stick, evading the monster and hiding. And as the monster looks for her, Jen's arming herself with the stick and bones. She goes at it again, stabbing it twice in the leg. But the monster hits her against the tree. As she's recovering, she notices the monster's bleeding. She hurriedly finds some weapon that she hidden along the beach and stabs that monster again as it tries to grab her. The tactic continues. Monster comes for her and Jen quickly stabs it with various sharpened sticks and bones. Finally, the monster catches Jen. It grabs her by the leg and lifts her up by her face. 
She takes another bone from her pocket and continually stabs this monster in the chest. The beast drops her, and she escapes. Jen turns around, ready to fight when the monster gives a scream and finally drops dead. Jen goes back to the beast and beheads it. Then, we see a wider shot of the beach with the jungle burning. I have no clue what this movie's about, but Sweetheart was released in 2019, produced by Blumhouse Productions. Some of those that starred in the movie are Kiersey Clemens, Emery Cohen, and Andrew Crawford. If you were Jen, would you have left Lucas and me on the island as well? Let us know with that hashtag cinema recap in the comments.